She has severe bleeding from the head. She's possibly been shot. We just got to get there. 113, I believe it's the house with the lights on. Damn boy. What happened? I woke up and she was on the floor. Clayton, bleeding. Bleeding. Where are you bleeding from? What happened? You don't know? Can I see your hands? Call them over for me. Is there anybody else in the house? Is there anybody else in the house? The medics are just right down the road. They'll be right here. In Ash County, North Carolina, Sergeant Aaron Reed and Deputy Jake Howell are trying to save a woman believed to have been shot in the head. That's pretty good bleeding going on there. Yeah. She's got a lot of bleeding from the back of her head. Pretty good matting in the back of her head from the book. All right. My name's Cody. I'm with the ambulance service. What's going on? Just I want you to remember something. Deep breaths in through your nose and out your mouth. I gotta get you to keep that breathing calm, okay? The leaves, was the leaves on her head? Yeah, that's what I think. I thought was part of her scalp. I thought she'd been shot with the amount of blood that came out. Can you tell me what happened? I went to take my son's out on for a walk and I fell down and fell in it. Blood in the door, Frank. Yeah. She's opened the door. She's opened the door, yeah. She's probably fell when she hit these rocks, except on a leaf or something. She said she was going out to walk the dog. And it's wet and raining. She slipped, lost her balance, and fell and hit her head. And the husband was asleep, and he awoke to her crying and bloody, blood everywhere. So that alarmed him and made him think that something terrible had happened to her. One, two, three. Now I'm not sure where you go. He's going to go to the hospital and get medically checked out. It turns out there was no active shooter in Ash County tonight. But 70 miles through the mountains in Sullivan County, Tennessee. Cars by there's a male subject walking around the trailer park with a high powered rifle. It's coming in the area of Gravely Road. The caller called from a mobile home park. A gentleman walking around with a uh, high powered rifle and he heard some shots. And there could be a a disturbance involving a gun. We're going to be the closest, so we'll be the first ones there. Deputy Burke Murray arrives on scene without backup. He has no idea where the armed suspect may be hiding. Got a fire beer behind one of the trailers. Nobody around it. Yeah, I'll check it. Any shell casings? We haven't located the guy with the gun. Tell her Everybody's gonna have a gun tonight.
got a 911 call come in. Husband advising something has happened to his wife. She has severe bleeding from the head. She's possibly been shot. We just got to get there. 113, I believe it's the house with the lights on. Damn What happened? I woke up and she was on the floor, bleeding. 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 Where are you bleeding from? I was inside, so I tried to bust him out. Well, here's what we're going to have to do. You're definitely too close to these houses. So you're going to have to work your way back that way. You're going to have to be at least 100 yards away from the house. OK. Yeah, you just got a little too close to the houses. There's plenty of land back that way. Just don't yeah. come this way. I was trying to see the coon he got tree, but I don't see it. Well, I guess it's his lucky night tonight. All right. All right. Well, other than that, we'll pack the stuff up and go. Well, the gentleman had come in from another part of the county and didn't realize they had got so close to the houses. They agreed to leave and make sure from now on they know exactly where they're at in the woods. So the coon got away tonight. Everything okay down there? Yeah, they agreed to leave for the night. And he said he'll make sure of where he's at from now on. Okay. Well, All right. I'm sorry to bring you guys out. Oh, that's what we're out here for. Okay. No problem. Gun that. They must have put out a memo or something. That everybody brings your guns to town. Deputy Burke Murray knows a lot more guns are coming into town. because it's fall in the south and fall brings out the hunters and with them their rifles but it's not just armed hunters the deputies have to look out for it's also the animals themselves we also referenced a deer that's been hit in the field between 11w and deck valley road oh my god the collar got with it i believe it's injured it can't move we have a lot of deer in this area, and they feel the need to run out in the road. Apparently, uh, the caller on this said it's mangled up pretty bad, so we're going to see if we can locate it. And if it's suffering and real badly injured, then you got to kill it. And just FYI, I hate doing this. I'm not kidding. I shot more deer last year than most hunters got in their season. More pretty sure I had, a, I, I like set a record. Seven. Where's Bambi? This is the field he's talking about. 31 to 97. Deputy Michelle Gillum searches for the 911 caller. Hey, how's it going? Where, where is this? It's over on the hill. OK. How, how bad mangled is it? It's got blood coming out of his mouth and his butt split all open. I'm going to try to get him right behind the ears because that, that's pretty much just a one shot. Okay. So I was trying to ask because I don't like to get near their hooves. Do y'all want the deer or just... Yeah, we want it. I mean, you want it? Okay. It. Yeah, I mean, if you want it, knock yourself out. Can he move? Yeah, he ran over here. Oh, so he's movable. Oh, oh yeah, he is moving. Hmm. I see. We was under the impression that he was, like, down for the count. I mean, if you get up to him, he's pretty much. He asked if we could put him down, and they said no. <laughs> Who said no? When we called. This called. Oh, OK. Here's the thing. We cannot shoot deer if they're mobile. And where I saw the deer run, it's mobile. So if they're still mobile, we don't shoot deer. Okay. I'm saying, would I get in trouble if I grab my knife and? I mean. We're all adults here. You can you can do what you think you can. I can't tell you what you can do right now. Y'all you, catch my drift? OK, all right. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. They just wanted the deer. That's all they wanted.
As hunting season continues in Sullivan County, Deputy Burke Murray is on a hunt of his own. Hunting is like law enforcement because you got to have patience to be able to, to wait for the animal or the person that you're trying to catch uh, comes around. You spend a lot of time researching who they are and where they stay. Just like hunting, you learn where the deer are and where they are hiding and sleeping at night, and you try to be there to get them safely. 194, 345. Go ahead. Head towards the hospital. Reference that Jonathan Dishner, he's supposedly at that location. Two. So now we're going up here to the parking lot of the hospital. Great. Supposed to be a guy there that we have active warrants on. Campbell. We're going to go up there and see if we can snag him. I'm not too far behind you. We always hunt as a group. Kind of the pack mentality, the, you know, overwhelming numbers. Sergeant Rick Rumley joins the hunt for Jonathan Dishner, wanted for violating his probation for theft and vandalism charges. 194. He's on the third floor right now. Let's work on the side. Tim. A lot of times you have to wait on them to come to you. You have to be patient and uh, wait on who you're looking for or what animal you're looking for to come by. Sullivan County officers begin the stakeout for their fugitive. Yep, they're going to have to him, I guess. Officers have Jonathan Dishner in their sights. He's on the third floor right now. Sullivan County officers have been staking out fugitive Jonathan Dishner, wanted for violating his probation on theft and vandalism charges. He's supposedly leaving now. Yep, they're going to have to him, I guess. Bird, go ahead. Two. That was him. That's your boyfriend. He's got a warrant for his arrest. I'll explain it to you in just a second. No, can't get your old man by, no. Step out here, then get you away from the pocket book. He's in the car. He's gonna think I did this. No, we'll tell him you didn't. My boy's just telling Bob. I'm gonna walk back here with you, okay? And that'll give you an opportunity to say goodbye. Stand right here. Baby, I love you. I didn't do this, baby. I swear to God on my son, I didn't do this. Jonathan, I love you. Please don't do this to me. I'm coming to you out. I love you. He's going to wait for this. I'm going to get my ass back to this. Well, then you don't need to be with him if he's going to do that. Ain't no kind of old man will be beating on you. We got our man. That's it. <laughs> Good job, guys. That was a, a good little pursuit, and that was a good little hunt. Deputy Murray has bagged his game on the run. But at night, he's got something else in his sights. What's going on? Oh, boy. Got a deer? Yeah. 
Uh, do you want a wrecker or you want to try to drive it somewhere? Uh, I can't drive it. Think that deer's over there? He come across this way. I'll just take a pot over here. Pretty good deer. It's like four points. Yep. yep. Good buck. And we was talking about deer meat earlier. <laughs> I'm going to have to buy my daughter a license as many as she gets. She gets two or three a year. So I didn't get that when I was hunting. Let me do a collision report for insurance or is that it would be so great. OK. Those kind of wrecks with deer are all too common around this part of the country. So we do one or two of those a day. Evidently, there's a lot of deer out here that want to commit suicide. We're not have units. We may not have a vehicle. Temple. Janet's over in uh, Bloomingdale, got a car stopped. Going toward her in case she needs anything. It takes us a few minutes to get over there. Across town, Deputy Roger Antone hears the same call. 10-4. See where Janet is real quick in the back of her She's out with two suspects in reference to a traffic stop, so we're going to make sure that she's safe. What's going on? Look at it. Oh, my. <laughs> All right. Oh, my. Did you see the, the jack? I get too far behind. Three, four, I let them stay ahead of me, caught a bitch. I was afraid that was Coke. final destination stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially. I'm pretty sure she already told you that's illegal to have your, your, your all that block in your view. Yeah, correct? I know. My buddy works for a carpet place. Oh, and uh, they throw away brand new carpet line, so he gives it to us. Got your kids in there, too? Yeah. As Deputy Janet Boyd runs the licenses, Officer Murray arrives on scene. You can't see. Right, well, when Deputy Boyd hears back from dispatch, she finds out this is one traffic violator that she's taking downtown. Carrying car has been pulled over in Sullivan County. You can't see. Right, well. And now this driver is about to get blindsided. But we got the problem. Let's go. Uh, what's going on? Get a warrant out of Kingsport. For what? I don't know what Larson. Theft. Theft for us. Don't know. It's just a theft. We have another problem. Uh, she's wanted as well. She's got a warrant on her. Let's go for a few There's a warrant on you too, so you got somebody to come get the babies? Turns out the car's other occupant is wanted for theft as well. They're both going to be going to jail on those warrants. We have two small children in the car with them and uh, trying to make arrangements for family members to get the children, uh, get them out of the way before they see mom get arrested. That's a cool name too, man. How about this, brother? Since you got a cooler name than me, we'll switch names. You sure? <laughs> Family arrives to take care of the children. One of you takes the vehicle to her house. Yeah. But that has to come off the bill. You're not going to unload this. You're going to go get some car. Yeah. 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 I love you. I love you, honey. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to get out of here. Oh. People do weird things, you know. The front part wasn't strapped at all. That was just laying on the hood. Um, they could barely see out of the car. There was a lot could have went wrong. Drivers need to be able to see the road, especially this time of year in Sullivan County. And Deputy Richard Lingerfeld knows why. You're getting around an Edgefield Road for big person here. 333. I've got him here. I'm 1097. How you doing, partner? All right, you all right? All righty. So we got deer. Yeah. Come down the road and is laying over there, crawling up the ditch. He'd been run over. So you didn't hit it. 
Yeah, somebody had hit him. You can see where it crawled all the way up through there. He's blood. I just didn't want it to lay here and suffer, though, that's for sure. No, I shot it through the top of the head with the crossbow. We finished it off. You want it? Yeah, oh yeah, that's the reason I called. <laughs> uh, you can take it. I'm glad somebody's taking it. I ain't getting wasted. No, I don't let them go to waste. You can eat them with a spoon, man. <laughs> that's some good eating. <laughs> that's for sure. It helps us whenever they want to take the deer. It, that keeps us from just having to dispose of it. Dinner. <laughs> that's the next process of it. He's going to take it. He's going to be able to feed it him and his family and stuff. So overall, everything worked out. Appreciate it. All right, bud. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you getting it. Oh, yeah. You have a good night. That's food on the table for this crossbow hunter. As another day dawns across the Blue Ridge Mountains, Deputy Michelle Gillum gears up for another day of hunting season. I have noticed that uh, when it's hunting season, we get a lot more um, shots fired, calls, things like that. Sometimes we'll get calls about people that will drive down these country back roads and they'll see a deer and they'll just hang a gun out the window and shoot the deer and then carry on. You know, just certain calls like that. Um, we get a lot of those around like deer season, more so than usual. 381, animal complaint at Bridge Four Drive. Caller's advised on a horse and a donkey are in the caller's yard. We've been having this problem with these animals. They're donkeys, miniature horses, and horses. We've been up here a total of 24 times in the past two weeks of dealing with these same horses. We have people that keep telling us, you know, so-and-so's the owner. So-and-so don't live here no more. I've spoke to several different officers that went up here and they say as soon as they show up, the animals take off running because they're real wild. I don't do the animals. So I was just forewarning you. This could get funny. 10 4 10 I 7. There's one. And now these poor people have to deal with these horses, and it's not even their fault. Well, we're sorry about all this. I know it's probably a hassle. Where does his daughter live? I have no idea. He called her a little bit ago. That's my father in law. Oh, okay. Okay, Sorry. Drake, just, just let us know that you're on your way then, okay? Do you have the daughter on the phone? Yeah, okay, hold on a minute. Hold yeah. on, this deputy's on to talk to you. Hold on, here she is. Do you own these horses or does your dad? We got a week there. Okay, where is he at? Because we cannot find him. He's out of town. Here's the thing, these horses have been giving us a fit for the past month. Someone needs to be held liable for these horses because they keep getting out. We had three calls on them last night, so this is unacceptable at this point. No, no, because I've been called up, I've been called up here three times and one of them was for a wreck that these horses caused. Just come up here and get your horses. Come up here and get your horses or animal controls won't come out here and take them, period. I'm not gonna sit here and have you yell at me. You're reliable for these horses, you and your dad are. Come up here and get them. So I will see you shortly, goodbye. I called the daughter who is 16 years old. She will not tell me her father's phone number because she said that we're out to get him. What's she doing out of school? I don't know. So, like I said, she's a treat. I don't understand horses. Oh, this ought to be joyful. She didn't even bring a horse trailer. Take them, take every single one of them. Well, we need an owner, and you're 16, so you're a juvenile. Call my mom. That's what she said. Well, give me the info, and I will. What's your mom's name? Hello? Your daughter was dropping the F-bomb on the phone, cussing me, but since she's a juvenile, you're her parent. You guys are responsible, okay? If the horses continue to get out, you guys are going to be criminally charged, okay? <laughs> Fabulous. All right, bye. Come on, Black Jack. The mother said that she's tired of dealing with it, so she says she just won't give them away. But at least I now know one of the horse's names. So now I know. When I have to go back up there, it's Blackjack. During hunting season, the deer are out and about in Appalachia. But they're not the only animals on the road in Sullivan County. 
Hey, buddy. Hey, Papa. Hey, big boy. Deputy Nico is on the hunt with his human partner, Roger Antone. Basically, we're our urban hunters hunting for narcotics and uh, criminal activity. We were called out to perform a canine search. The officer, his probable cause for the stop was ran the license plate. It did not belong to that vehicle. You never know something that simple as a license plate may lead to something big. What's going on? Tag, don't come back to that car. This guy that's okay. supposed to be the owner of the car. OK, let me speak to him. You're the owner of this car, man. OK. You dabble in meth or weed or anything like that, man? Be honest. Uh, no. All right, I'll be back with to talk to you, OK? I'm um, stretch his legs a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Good boy, yes, sir. If you would, step back a little bit further, sir. Nico is trained to sniff out five odors, marijuana, meth, heroin, cocaine, and ecstasy. <laughs> Jackpot. Good boy. Nico is trained to sniff out five odors, marijuana, meth, heroin, cocaine, and ecstasy. In Sullivan County, Tennessee, deputies Roger Antone and Nico are on the hunt for drugs. <laughs> That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Come here. What do you got? He's hit on the front of the car there. You want to help me search it? He hit on the front of the car. It's probably coming through the vent, most likely. Deputies find a cereal box in the car. With a prize inside. We got some baggies, scales, rolling papers. found in here. Yeah. It was this actually this whole packet was found hidden in the rice cereal box. Some new treats. <laughs> the officer will be charging the owner for the Schedule II narcotics of methamphetamine and drug paraphernalia. <laughs> oh boy. Heck a good boy. Good boy. You're the man, aren't you? Good job, buddy. When it comes to drugs, that dog can hunt. In another part of Sullivan County, Deputy Travis Jackson is about to start a hunt of his own. Can you guys have his address for a dude and he is still lost? We just got a call of a check area for a deer that's been struck by a vehicle. And so we're going to go over here and locate the deer. We'll assess its injuries and see if it's something that is survivable or make sure that the deer don't suffer. Deputy Jackson meets up with his partner, Brandon Poff, who has located the injured deer. Yeah. Injuries mainly to his mouth, head area. Yeah, OK, I see it now. Yeah, it's, it's not going to make it. The deer has been hit. It's got injuries that it's not going to survive. And at this point, you can see the deer's uh, in some sort of pain, so uh, we'll have to shoot it. It's, it's one of the things we don't like to do, but uh, what, what gives us a little bit of peace is the fact that, you know, they're no longer suffering at that point. You know, it's, uh, it's the least we could do. We're out here on this. Injured deer, 10 Ford, 10 7. Got injuries, not gonna make.
in this case, uh, one of the passerbys uh, was able to take the deer in order to not have the deer go to waste. When we have to put a deer down, it's, it's definitely not one of the brighter points of the job. I hate it, but sometimes we have to do it. As the morning rays highlight the crisp fall colors of Appalachia, Deputy Jacob Hulse is doing a little hunting with his gun, his radar gun. Stopped the girl for an expired tag the other day. She ended up being a, having a warrant out for arrest for a aggravated burglary. Cause it's, it's one thing you never really know what you're gonna get into. things we do is stopping cars. You never know who you're pulling over. 357, 1027. You never know what they're thinking, what their intentions are. You really can't ever tell. Put your hands on the dashboard for me here. You never know who it is, what they're thinking, what their intentions are. You really can't ever tell. In Sullivan County, Tennessee, Deputy Jacob Hulse has just pulled over a white truck for speeding. Put your hands on the dashboard for me here. All right, the reason I stopped is because I got you at 51 and it's only 40 through there. Okay. Something wrong in a hurry or just wasn't paying attention? Or... I wasn't paying attention. All right, I just need your ID, your insurance and registration, his ID too hey, if he has just it. Bought it. So you don't have insurance on it yet? Uh-uh. You have any paperwork at all? Why don't you have a license, buddy? I do revoke. OK, what are you revoked for? Drunk driving a long time, been years ago. Step out of the vehicle for me, bro. OK. Walk. You just sit sit tight there, brother. Walk right back to the back of my car. 257. Put your hands on my trunk right above my gas cap. Revoke, HTO, very lengthy history. Spread your feet for him, bro. You have anything on you at all? No. You know what's going on, buddy? Yeah, I'm going to tell. Why in the world are you out here driving? You didn't think he's going to get caught? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Uh -oh. OK, put your hands oh. right back for him. Right now, what you're being charged with is your HTO, habitual traffic it's offender. Fine. Driving on revoked. Violation of the registration law, because you couldn't give me a copy of the registration. No insurance. Can you give me a copy of the insurance. Yeah. You drive a car on this road, brother, you have to have insurance on it, OK? Yeah. That and speeding, OK? 1041 custody. Have your seat there, bro. All right, just what I was talking about. You never know what you're going to run into. We stopped him for going 11 mile an hour over speed limit. Turns out he's an habitual traffic offender. So he'll be on his way to Sullivan County Jail. 10-6 jail. All right, step on in. He had a very lengthy history already. He just added to it today. Like he said, he just didn't think he was going to get caught. And today he did. At night in Sullivan County, Deputy Roger Antone is out on patrol again in a different vehicle, and for a very good reason. Well, hit a deer, uh, a buck, a buck, <laughs> not Bambi, but a buck. So my car is in the shop, and uh, Nico's at home on vacation. I don't go hunting, so at least I got something. <laughs> Deputy Antone may not have seen that deer, but tonight, he's about to spot something else on the road. Oh, what happened? Looked like somebody got on the car, someone's walking. Yeah. It appeared that somebody stopped in the middle of the road and was letting somebody out. This gentleman's walking here, and it looks like a 
probably mad at each other, so we're going to try to make contact. 354. Be out with the vehicle here on a possible motor assist on Moreland. Looks like they're possibly in an argument. We'll see. Hey, brother. Sir. Hello. How you doing? Fine. Everything okay? Yes, sir. Okay, brother. I guess you and your wife are arguing or something? Walking home. Okay, brother. Yeah. How far you live, bro? Right up here at the uh, Fiddler's Way. Okay, bro. The last convenience store. Okay, take it easy. <laughs> yeah, Adrian. <laughs> Three fifty-four. <laughs> Three fifty-four. Appears the husband and wife is arguing. Husband decided to walk home. Everything's 10 4. Oh, good. <laughs> he's, he's blessed right now. Right now, she's circling around trying to convince him to get back in the car. And of course, he doesn't look like he's wanting to get back in the car, which is probably is a good thing, you know, because he won't start an argument. But nope, not my wife. My wife's a strong cookie. She, she'll tell you how it is. Me and my wife had gotten to an argument. And I took off walking, thinking that, you know, she's going to circle around. No, I got fooled. I had to walk home. <laughs> Lesson learned, I walked eight miles home. <laughs> when I got home, she's laughing. I was like, oh, man. She's like, that's what you get. She said, you wanted to walk? You're going to walk. But sure enough, I walked. <laughs> Back at the Sullivan County Sheriff's Station, Deputy Travis Jackson prepares for one final hunt. Hunting deer can be like hunting fugitives in the sense that it takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, and some nights you don't get anything. Oh, well, we got a warrant to go after. It's Jason Robinson. Jason Robinson wanted for violation of probation for theft. They said he likes to run out the back. Do y'all want to take the back? Let's hit it. All right, I'll follow you. We're all going to an address to try to locate a subject. They've got an active warrant out on him. They've gotten a tip that he's supposed to be at this address right now. So we're going to go and see if he's there. And if he's there, we can. Oh! Ah! They've got an active warrant out on him. They've gotten a tip that he's supposed to be at this address right now. So we're going to go and see if he's there. And if he's there, we can. Oh! Ah! Oh no. God bless. No Did it hit your car? No, did it hit you? Yeah. Name and man of future. Do it for me, please. Oh my god. Hey, I just hit a deer. I mean, you can tell that I've done damage. Okay. Bye. Are you feeling this? I'm so mad right now. 31. Show me 10 6 month of Boulevard for a minute. I just hit a deer. My car is ruined. My new car. Yeah. I take so 
such good care of this car. Oh, shut up. The deer are out in full force. But so are Sullivan County deputies. Travis Jackson leads a team to hunt for Jason Robinson, wanted for violation of probation for theft. A lot of people in this area have guns, so you have to exercise a lot of extra caution. Jackson and his team converge on the location where they believe the fugitive is hiding. Sheriff's office, come to the front door. We showed up the lights. Come to the front door, we know you're inside. We need to speak with you. Jason, you're Jason, Yeah, come on. Hey, you Jason Robinson? Yeah. Uh, you have anything on you? No. Let's go down here, okay? We got a warrant for your arrest. Down here is beating on that door. Don't go on that door. I can do it. I can get that in one ear. Sorry to wake you. Oh, you're fine. Back to jail. You been in jail a lot? I'll save it there. So you're saying that you've been in jail for your birthday the last three years? Uh, yeah. I was in there last year and the year before last. And then this year will be the third year. I'm a fan of Southern Justice. It's a good show. We all love Southern Justice. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Kick ass show. <laughs> I think we're going to call it a wrap for tonight. Yeah. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah. Hey, I want to be on TV. Sound of justice. And with that, hunting season is over. <laughs> <laughs>